Mario Galaxy. It's a game I'll always come back to. It's truly special. Every time I play it, I just feel calm. It's so easy to just pick a level and spend hours replaying it and taking in the scenery. The levels are all beautiful and filled to the brim with interesting little details. About a month ago, I was relaxing in the ice areas of Freeze Flame Galaxy, and I decided that I wanted to take my time and look for some tiny details for a YouTube short. I started searching, but I ran into a problem. This galaxy has way too many interesting things in it to fit into one 60 second video. So I started working on this video, where we would be taking a deep dive into everything interesting I could find about this galaxy. And let me tell you, there's a lot to cover. Alright, the first thing I'll be covering is the frozen peak of Baron Burr. In this level, you can find an enemy called a bomb. Which is a very silly name. Goofy name aside, I noticed something quite odd about them while I was no clipping. And that is the fact that, like their distant cousin, the Thwomp, these bombs have two faces. One on the front that you can see, and the other one that's on the back, and isn't visible unless you can see through walls. It's a bit odd that Nintendo would give them a face in a place that nobody would ever see. But if I had to guess, it would probably be because of this bomb right here. This, to my knowledge, is the only bomb that you can see both the front and back of. And instead of making two different bomb textures, Nintendo decided it would be better just to make one, and apply it to all of them. So even though you can't see it, it's still there. The frozen peak of Baron Burr is also known for being one of the few levels in the game to utilize the ice flower. If you're unfamiliar with how the ice flower works in Mario Galaxy, then here's a little refresher. When you grab the flower, you have a limited amount of time where you can turn water into ice by walking on top of it. Think of it as being the same as Frostwalker boots for Minecraft. Something interesting, however, is that there's actually a way to touch water without freezing it. Using this ice flower at the start of the level, you can jump off the stone wall here and grab said ice flower. Once you do, fall off this ice platform and into the water below, and turn towards the ice platform in midair. If done correctly, then Mario will fall into the water without freezing it, and he can walk around without causing it to freeze. I'm not sure why this happens, and I haven't been able to recreate it anywhere else, so if anybody knows the technical reasons for this, please contact me because I'd love to learn more about what's actually happening here. But that's not the only odd thing about the ice flower in this galaxy. If we climb the mountain a bit and head to the second ice flower, it can be found inside of a floating crystal just above some wood platforms that sink as you stand on them. If we stand on one of the wood platforms just below the ice flower and allow it to sink as far down as it goes, and then jump and spin to break that crystal, but avoid collecting the power up, then the ice flower will float gently down to the wood platform. If we jump off this platform, then as it rises out of the water, the ice flower will go with it. Alright, pop quiz. What happens to the ice flower if we jump back on the wood platform and cause it to sink again? The logical answer would be that the ice flower would sink with it, but that's not what happens. Once you jump back on and let it sink, the flower will not float down and instead just hover in the air, which is super strange and makes zero sense whatsoever. Stepping away from the power-ups and up the mountain, we can find Baron Burr himself. To fight him, you need to wall jump up to him using the ice flower. Or do ya? I'm pretty sure everybody knows this, but if you didn't, you can jump and spin onto this ice wall and skip the wall climb section entirely. On the third phase of this boss fight, he will spit out two minions to fight you. These minions can be found throughout the level, but do you know what they are called? According to the wiki, these enemies are called little birds, which I just think is neat. Anyways, after fighting Baron Burr, instead of grabbing the star like a sane person, you can instead jump down the mountain and head up the opposite side to collect the secret star. To get the secret star, the intended place to start would be to grab the ice flower and jump up those sprinklers. You do not need to do that, however. It's quite easy to simply triple jump, wall jump, and then spin instead. Once over here, there's several snowmen that you need to melt using the fire flower. This one, however, is actually skippable by simply long jumping past it. At the summit of this mountain, where the secret star is, there's something rather interesting. There's an invisible platform here that you can stand on, and it doesn't look like it should be a spot that you can stand on, but you can. Looking down from the summit, we can see the arena that we fought Baron Burr in. If we try jumping down, we'll be sucked into this black hole. There's a way to get past this, however, and it's pretty simple. Long jump in this direction, and you can avoid the giant ball of swirling death and land inside of the arena. If Baron Burr is still alive, then it will initiate the cutscene like normal. Next up, I'm going to be talking about something particularly strange, and that would be the reflections. If we zoom in, you'll notice that Mario seems to have no pupils or eyelids, making him look very creepy and kind of reminds me of Herobrine. This isn't the only strange thing about the reflections. Watch what happens as he jumps. 
Did you see it? The reflection enters a jump animation but doesn't actually move, staying in the exact same spot instead of moving away from the player like you would expect. But the iceberg goes deeper. Mario and Luigi are the only characters that actually have this type of reflection. The rest of the characters either have a shadow or a completely different type of reflection. This second type of reflection is rather interesting. In the areas that the second types of reflections appear, if we take a look at Mario, you will have both the first and second type of reflection, which is very strange. The first type of reflection gets even stranger, however. If you stand on a reflective surface in front of a non-reflective surface, and you can see Mario's reflection on the non-reflective surface, and it can even be seen through walls. The second type of reflection, however, cannot be seen on non-reflective surfaces, which is what I would expect. In the third star of Freeze Flame Galaxy, as soon as you land, you will notice that there is a ledge to Mario's left that looks like you can stand on it. This, however, is not the case. Try as you might, you'll be pulled towards the lava and burn, which is very counter Intuitive. In the fire sections of Freeze Flame Galaxy, you will notice that the camera is distorted by heat waves. Something I find interesting is the way that this effect actually works. It's actually an overlay, and we can break the illusion by unlocking the camera and moving away from where the camera should be. As you can see here, it's just a giant rectangle that goes in front of the camera and adds the effect, and it looks quite strange as we move from left to right. In High and Cold Collide, on this planet you can get out of bounds by doing this jump. It's a lot more difficult than it looks and requires a bit of unusual tech to get up this section of the wall. Don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you. Jokes aside, to practice this bit of tech, we're gonna go to Honey Hive Galaxy and use this wall right at the start. First, you're gonna wanna jump backwards and spin so that Mario is sliding while facing down. It will not work if he's sliding on his stomach. If you try the jump and spin, you'll notice that he will not spin properly, and he'll stay in the same place and not gain any more height. This is not what we want, so you're gonna hold the stick in the direction that he is sliding, and then jump, which is very counterintuitive. Once he's in the air, you're gonna wanna flick the stick in the direction that you want to go, and spin. For some reason, this allows him to do a full spin. Keep holding the stick in that direction until Mario lands. Hands. At which point you will want to flick the stick back in the direction that he is sliding and repeat. This will allow him to infinitely spin up the slope and make it to the top. Now that we understand how to do this, we can use it in Freeze Flame Galaxy. I find the best starting position to be right here. Walk forward and tap the jump button just before the slide. Try to land on this olive colored area and do another jump by tapping the A button. On the last jump, you're going to want to hold the jump button and spin. Make sure you're far enough away not to hit the wall as you spin. Once you are up on top, you Use the tech from Honey Hive Galaxy until you hit this brown section, where you will wall jump up and over the top. This jump is not easy and took me well over an hour to make it the first time. But don't give up because I believe in you. Once you're up on top, you can walk around like normal except Mario seems to be slightly in the ground. There's some patches of invisible water up here as well, so that's pretty cool. In Freeze Flame's Blistering Core, if you go to the end of the level and grab the Fire Flower, now normally if you shoot these little guys with a fireball, then it will have no effect. If you shoot them after you spin them and their flames have gone out, then it will revive them. If, however, you spin next to these enemies in order to get them to fall into the lava, once they are in the lava, you can hit them with a fireball and cause them to ignite repeatedly. They will stay like this forever, which is pretty cool. But what's even cooler is we can use this glitch to create another glitch. Mario Galaxy has a maximum amount of particles it can render at once. If we turn three of these little fire guys into eternal flames, sending them into a state of limbo which they can never return from, which is a fate worse than death, then you'll notice that the last one will sputter in and out, never fully igniting. Once you have that set up, try and throw a fireball. After throwing one, you can see that it no longer has a flame trail, and is just a dinky little ball of goo that will bounce around, and it looks quite ridiculous. Alright, that's pretty much everything I could find in this galaxy that I felt was worth mentioning. If I missed anything, then let me know down in the comments. Anyways, make sure you like, subscribe, and all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. You're welcome.